Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'd like to show you how to do a calculus problem, uh, which is really kind of more of a physics problem, but to do this in a calculus way. We're going to take a look at this word problem here, and this is about a uh, change of velocity over time. So we're in an integration section, or an antiderivative section of our calculus book, and we're looking at word problems such as this one. A car company from Europe states that their vehicle can increase from 25 kilometers per hour to 80 kilometers per hour in 13 seconds. If the acceleration is constant, what would it be in meters per second per second? And I'll explain that. And how many feet did the vehicle travel in those 13 seconds? So let's take a look at the idea of acceleration. Acceleration. If acceleration, I need to set up my pen here, I'm sorry. Make sure my pen's set up. So if acceleration is my position function's second derivative, we have to make sure we understand that. Our position function's, position function's second derivative. And in a sense, this derivative, if you understand it to be the derivative of velocity, or the derivative of the first derivative, then what we're doing is we're looking at a change of velocity or an S prime change over time, a change of time. So that's what the second derivative is. And so what we're doing is we're looking for a change of velocity in a sense over a change of time. So that's how we're going to use this 80 to 25 or 25 to 80 change. So if I look at the change from 80 to 25 kilometers per second, per second, okay, or excuse me, kilometers per hour, that's kilometers per hour, then what we're doing is looking at that change over the change of time in 13 seconds. Now this will be 55 kilometers per hour as a change, okay, and we're doing this across 13 seconds. Now we want our answer to be in just meters, not kilometers, and we do want it to be in per second per second, which to understand that per second per second, the, this, this last per second is just the time per 13 seconds or divide by 13 and make it per one second. So this is basically the change of time in the denominator. The meters per second is what S prime is or the change here. Okay, because this is, you can see it, kilometers per hour. So you can see this is a change over time. And then we need to convert this so that it's a change over time over time to basically be per second per second. So if I look at 55 kilometers and I want to convert this, and here comes a quick little physics lessons. You got to work with the units and units will cancel just like algebra. So I need to cancel the KMs. I need to cancel the KMs and convert it with meters. And there are a thousand meters in, per one KM. And then I need to get rid of the hours, get rid of the hours in the speed of kilometers per hour by having that unit on top. And again, it'll cancel just like in algebra. So I think of, I want to convert this to seconds. And so here we go. We have three six zero zero three thousand six hundred that's sixty times sixty 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 seconds okay and uh, uh, sixty minutes so sixty times sixty there it will get you that conversion and now we've converted this quick little multiplier I'm going to cancel a zero you're gonna get 550 over 36 then so if I take out my calculator real quick and convert that I will have a get the calculator on here will it turn on so if I get that going, then I've got 550 divided by 36. So just to give you the, an idea of what that number means, that means that this is traveling round figures 15.2 meters every second when I'm going 55 kilometers per hour. Okay, and uh, that will then, if to really give you an understanding, if I converted the 80 and the 25, and just to let you know, the 80 and the 25 convert basically to uh, 6.9 meters per second, and this one is 22.2 .2 meters per second. You can run the same conversion to check that if you like. But what we're saying here is we're changing this 15.2 meters per second 
there's the change but roughly okay and we are now going to put that <clears throat> and divide that by 13 to get our total time so it, or it's to, or our s x s double prime of t or our acceleration so this will give me an our acceleration assuming that it is constant don't forget assuming that it's constant and we're changing on average this 55 kilometers per hour per 13 seconds which is now 15.2 meters per second across 13 seconds and this will give us our constant acceleration our a basically so again over to the calculator and if we look at that answer that answer I don't like to round it I'll try to divide that exact answer by 13 we're gonna see that our acceleration is 1.175 roughly 1.175 now to understand acceleration that means I am changing my velocity at 1.175 I'm changing my velocity meters per second at 1.175 every second and sometimes we like flip and multiply the seconds and consider it seconds squared and if you're in physics class so this is my acceleration in per second per second uh, meters per second per second here now how many feet did I travel that means I've got to get to the position function so I'm gonna take a look at the fact that the position function is the second derivative which means I'm going to take this equation, this well is constant, not really necessarily an equation, but yes, it's an equation, it's just a constant equation. And I'm now thinking that I need to integrate this. So I'm going to integrate both sides by dt. So my speed change, my speed change now, let me go to my speed change, will be s prime of t. See, so I've backed up a derivative. That's what we do in antiderivatives or integration. Is now 1.175 t plus c technically plus c technically. Well, if we look at this c at time zero, well, that's when I started my acceleration process. And what was my speed? What was my speed at time zero? My speed right here was 80 at time 0. So then you can see that c plus 0 or c will be 80 and now I have my velocity function. So from there I'm now going to take my velocity function. So I'm going to take s uh, prime of t, s prime of t is equal to 1.175 t plus 25 me kilometers per hour but we need to keep our units correct so I need to use the 6.19 I need to use the 6.19 starting okay so that then would be six, a starting point of 6.19 meters per second to be consistent with the meters per second that's implied in the acceleration so if I was to integrate again, integrate again, let's do it one more time based on time, dt. So if I was to integrate again, I would now have a position function, s of t is equal to 1.175 divided by 2 from doing the integration with t, so that goes to t squared, and that's why I divided by 2, okay, plus 6.9 t plus c so plus c well now what is my constant um, for my position what is my starting position well we're basically going to consider that the zero position so I'm just actually going to take the c and consider the fact that when I started this this was my distance zero and when I get 13 seconds into this equation in other words I'm going to take now this t and plug and chug a 13 in each little spot right there and it will tell me how much distance I have traveled in meters this will tell me in meters how far I've traveled during this acceleration so back to the calculator real quick and we are now gonna do one point oh I actually want to use the equation that's there I do that way it's using the whole non rounded one 
So what is that? I'm going to take 1.71 times t squared. So times, so I'm going to take the answer. Let me do that again. So clear that. Times, there we go, 13 squared. Let's use the squared button. Divided by 2, divided by 2, plus 6.9 times 13. So this should tell me how far I've traveled in meters, and it looks like I've traveled 189 meters, basically 189 meters. So back to the question over here. So how far did I just travel? 189 meters during that acceleration. Well, I hope that, I, that this has helped. I'm David from Electric Teaching, and thank you for listening.